been pretty interesting to see uh, kind of the, the results of the most recent crash. Um, it started with Luna, and Luna was like an oversized experiment, more or less, um, that ended up, you know, failing. And a lot of venture funds uh, had exposure to Luna from their early investing days. Um, or sorry, from early investments. And a lot of these venture funds will also have hedge funds to manage secondary market liquidity. Um, a lot of the fundamental hedge funds, so my group breaks down hedge funds into a couple of different categories. There's fundamental, there's quant systematic and market neutral. And the fundamental hedge fund managers, um, oftentimes are taking on a lot of beta risk for the market. Um, most didn't have outsized Luna positions, but with the Luna crash, it took everything down with it. And so um, the rest of their assets and their portfolio got hit pretty hard. Um, you know, we, we, I don't think we've seen uh, the final results from, from kind of the fallout of Luna. But I will say um, a lot of the market neutral funds did very well. As a matter of fact, when they're kind of steep, uh, steep drop-offs in, in prices in the market, it's oftentimes an opportunity for them to make outsized returns. So... Um, in May and and then even partway through June, because there was you know kind of persistent volatility, um, we saw some market neutral funds return 10% a month, you know, uh, and, and some quant systematic funds return 16%, you know, month to date. And so um, the, the funds that are a bit more dynamic and not necessarily tied to, to specific assets uh, were able to fare pretty well. Um, now I think you know to comment on the fundamental hedge funds. They are, they're doing, you know, bottoms up research for the most part and taking a longer term view. Um, so they are more or less okay with this type of volatility. Um, and the investors in those funds typically have a higher risk tolerance as well, knowing that they'll be subject to uh, the, the general crypto volatility, right? So, yeah, so I think the next few months are going to be challenging, uh, for sure. We're seeing all sorts of macro headwinds um, that are affecting every market at this point, right? Obviously, a lot of investors uh, globally have been putting a lot of emphasis on the Fed and their monetary policy. Um, and you know that seems to have been driving some of the panic and fear in right. traditional markets, which uh, you know in risk-off environments are highly correlated to the the digital asset space, or rather, the digital assets are highly correlated to um, the traditional markets when when people are just trying to get into a safe haven. Um, so I think definitely over the next couple of months, you know, things will be challenging. There'll be opportunities for sure. On the ground, there's a lot of development within the crypto space, uh, even when asset prices are down. Um, but then, you know, as we kind of come out of this, uh, you know, the turmoil, more or less, that we're seeing kind of uh, across all asset classes, um, crypto will recover at some point. Uh, I think, you know, north of six months would be like hopeful likely 12 months and, and beyond we will see like a wave of regulation come in um we're seeing a lot of developments with stable coins and specifically the issuers of stable coins and uh you know they're attesting to the reserves that they're holding um to make that product uh you know, a little more trustworthy so that then you can use those assets, um, those stable coins in financial applications and and feel comfortable knowing that your one dollar token is going to remain one dollar. Right. Um, and I think even beyond that, uh, as more and more financial professionals understand the technology, um, we'll see more resilient and kind of robust financial applications that are used by larger institutions, for instance, banks, you know, insurance companies, and just general, you know, enterprises. Um, I think we get hung up on asset prices a lot when it comes to crypto, and we don't really think about all the applications that can be built with the underlying technology. And so to kind of wrap back into... Um, what's been causing a lot of the recent volatility and the Fed policy and everyone reacting to that, uh, you can use this technology to quite literally engineer a monetary system where you understand how much money is out there. Mm -hmm. What type of policy should you actually implement uh, when you have all the transparency into what assets, what assets exist 
where they've been flowing, how much leverage is in the system. Um, currently, the Fed operates perhaps in you know its best capacity, which is uh, more or less you know throwing a dart at, at the wall and, and seeing if um, their interest rate hikes will will play out. So uh, I'm pretty optimistic. Um, within the next couple of years that we'll see some of that type of development. Um, it's going to be an uphill battle fighting some of the incumbents. Uh, but, you know, ultimately, I think the whole Luna implosion coupled with, you know, this general macro volatility will create a more resilient and sound digital asset space moving forward. Yeah, so I think um, overtake is an interesting word. I think all of traditional financial markets will ultimately be put on blockchains and we will have traditional securities like equities uh, that are tokenized so that then they can be used in various and innovative like DeFi applications where the decentralized part in DeFi could be a decentralized group of financial institutions, right? Um, that again, are interacting with you know equities and and bonds and other fixed income instruments and derivatives um but on a blockchain so then the next question is does all that value accrue to the layer ones that uh you know might be responsible for uh facilitating all these all these transactions um and ultimately like what what type of ecosystems these applications will be built in um will kind of you know, answer the question of will various crypto asset prices appreciate um, as the technology is developed? I think that's kind of up in the air, but certainly I think um, all of traditional finance will make its way onto a distributed ledger. When you have tokenized assets that represent real world value, um, you can move them around easier. You can use them potentially as collateral in like a DeFi uh, application. Um, on top of that, uh, I think too, again, like the transparency from the regulator's perspective, obviously keeping privacy in mind, but just having a better idea of how the system, the health of the system, um, I think is going to be one of the largest benefits that we aren't quite thinking about yet. Um, but again, pretty optimistic in the next few years, we'll make some, some big strides there.